Welcome back to my Across New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling. I shall see what's going on on our lovely island of Fawn Hollow today. And I don't know what to talk about today, to be honest. But did you see that there's a, a Big Brain Academy coming out for the Switch? I saw it because um, I opened up my Switch and I was like, wait, there's a Big Brain Academy on my Switch? Because there's a little trader for it on my left. And then, you know, I searched up and it's probably the first time in history that that sort of Switch advertising actually did something. Uh, at least for me. <laughs> at least I like to think so. But, you know, advertising is a lot more subliminal and much more like... um subconscious I suppose and that sort of thing is you they want to plant that sort of idea that name familiarity in your head rather than actually get you to go and buy that game necessarily but oh well hello everyone I'm now in Vaughan Hollow it's 4.43pm on Monday September 6th 2021 I will say when I saw the Big Brain Academy it's called Brain vs Brain or something I, for, for a bit like until I watched the trailer I was like is this a Big Brain Academy Battle Royale like Tetris 99 and I was like is this my time to shine in a Battle Royale because I have Big Brain Academy on both the DS and the Wii and I played it quite a lot and I, I like these sort of like fun sort of games I mean it's a bit vague but so dear things have been too crazy for me lately but you don't see me moping over it that's because I'm thankful even for the bad times you take all that stuff and use it for fertilizer see then see what blooms wise old Phoebe thanks Phoebe um <laughs> that sounded a lot more sarcastic when I meant it but yeah um I mean I, 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 I think I've talked about this game the games before but I played them a lot I like them a lot um, we sort of like brain draining style games are very much things I'm good at and I, I don't mean that in a way of like oh look how smart I am because I don't think that's necessarily true because as I said before brain training games kind of just make you better at brain training games rather than making you smart but I guess there's probably a correlation between being able to pick up patterns quickly and <laughs> being better at those sort of games which I guess I'm good at I remember back in I can't remember sick form or something we, we were part of this like um researchers survey or something she like she, she didn't like interview our class or but she distributed like these um pattern recognition sort of exams exams tests to do and she um she didn't come personally to our school but she it was like every single one every single person got the exam like at the in, in the morning like just before registration registration being like a, a roll call i think that's what it's called um and there was a little letter being like, oh, I'm a researcher. I'm trying to investigate. I can't remember something about students doing A-levels. I can't really recall, to be honest. And we had to do this like pattern recognition um, test. And then she, we, we did it at like, the start of A-levels and the end of A-levels to see how much we improved, I think. I can't really recall. But I, I remember from that, I was... Well, we never got results back. But in my mind, I was doing pretty good. But, you know, that's also, you know, done in Google effect. Maybe I wasn't doing as good. As I expected, no other, um, this is where you jump in saying that's not technically what Dan and Kruger effect says is something just like you tend to have a, a different estimation of your ability compared to the general populace or something rather than actually thinking you are better than you are. I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it, it's something like um, people misrepresent the Dan and Kruger effect all the time. Hold on, hold on, this is where you Google it. Dan and Kruger, just to make sure I don't spread out own false information. Cognitive bias where people believe that they are smarter, more capable than. No, hold on, we could use a Wikipedia one. Stating that people of low ability at a task overestimate their own ability and that people of a high ability at a task underestimate their own ability. I thought that's what people always say that it is with. But it, that's what it means. I thought maybe I understood it wrong. I don't know. Oh, well, who cares? Basically, you don't judge yourself all that well. well. Um, that's a fake Mona Lisa. We already have like five copies of this. That, that looks like a fake one to me. I think it needs to be a white minx, doesn't it? Oh, ferret, sorry. And this is a, a great one. So the only possible real one is this one, which I believe we already have, unfortunately. But it is legitimate, so we might as well buy it. I suppose. We should also be buying... I keep forgetting to do this. We should be buying Red's um, other furniture items because apparently, as I've learned, he distributes out different colour variations of these furniture items, which you might not necessarily be able to buy in your Nook Mile shop, which is why they're more expensive. But yeah, um... <laughs> what was I talking about? Something about Big Brain Academy. Oh yeah, brain training games are just kind of make you better at brain training games. Which is fine, I, I just kind of find them fun. It's sort of just like doing Sudoku. It's not like I'm doing Sudoku being like, oh, I'm going to be so smart after doing Sudoku. It, it kind of just makes you better at doing like Sudoku. I, I guess crosswords is probably a better <laughs> analogy since I actually do crosswords, not Sudoku. Um, but still, it's sort of just like, it's a bit of fun. And I, I, I genuinely thought for a little bit it was a Big Brain Academy battle royale. And I was about to be like, this is it. This is... This is a fantastic idea for a daily series or something. 
but it, but it's not. It, it, if there's like one on one modes, but something about that doesn't feel as appealing. I don't really feel like I want to crush like a, a ten year old or something. <laughs> In Big Brain Academy, but it's, it's not very particularly rewarding. Some people might find that rewarding, you know, victory's a victory. That's like victory isn't so much as rewarding is for me as a as personal victories, I suppose, are necessarily. Which you might be like, oh, that's so humble of you in a sarcastic way, which is I don't mean it in that way. It's just sort of like I'm um, I'm not very competitive as I feel like I for some reason established like once every three videos for some reason. Um, perhaps because I don't have many things to talk about myself, which is a bit more of a depressing thought. So perhaps that's just be like, oh, it's because it's a key part of my personality which is not, not I mean that's a pretty boring personality <laughs> trait thing so let's just swiftly move on from that but yeah what have I been up to today um I've been doing you know played some games and did some programming but that's, that, that's basically it um I'm trying to keep my SQL and Python knowledge top notch because I mean that's kind of useful um <laughs> and Game wise, nothing particularly interesting happening. Uh, as I say, I mean, I, I play a lot of like gacha games, maybe not unsurprisingly, but I, I just do. Um, or games with like waves of content releases. So right now, when not like a lull, we're just like in the middle of all the events, like Genshin, you know, there's not going to be a new banner till quite a while. Am I going to pull for Koken even new character? Nope, probably not. <laughs> I'm waiting for Ye and Albedo. Those are the only two characters I've got my, my sights set on right now. If you uh, in the loop for Genshin, shiny colours, nothing's really happening, we, we've still got like about five more days left in this Nocturne event, and even then the new banner which is coming like all of Astro Merit, many have already been released, so I'm not particularly fussed about um, upcoming banners. Uh, what else? Let me think. Starlight stage, I suppose the anniversary event's going on right now, that's kind of fun. Um, I've already, if you're, if you're wondering, because if, if you somehow, some it's amazing some people, what some people can remember from the comments <laughs> on some of the videos I watched. Someone, I can't remember who it is, it's from the person who always leaves, yeah, C C Cavill Cadence, that sounds right, who leaves like really helpful um, comments about Celeste and gives sort of like um, insights into tips and tricks and alternative paths and different techniques, which is always really nice. Like, record at some point I talked about Cosmic Express as a puzzle game I was interested in and was like, oh yeah, you should definitely check it out or something. It's and described a bit about it. I was like, wow, you remember that? I don't even remember talking about that. <laughs> I mean, I suppose it's different because um, a lot of you out there probably just pick and choose just one series to watch, which is completely fair, by the way. Like, don't mean, don't let me disregard that. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if I have completely different audi audiences from like Celeste to Talos Principle to Animal Crossing to what's the other game I'm playing right now? Bug Snacks. Or oh, Bug Snacks is. I haven't played it for like <laughs> weeks now because I finished it ages ago. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I have different audiences for over different things. Let's chop down some trees and get some wood. It's just, you know, the nature of it, I suppose. And it's not too big a deal. Well, not not any sort of deal, I suppose, in the end at all. Uh, yeah, we. I don't know why we even had this tree planted here. <laughs> They're very much blocking our decorations. But yeah, um... What's I talking about? There's something I wanted to follow on from this. Um... No, there was something, some, some comments I said, maybe? Is that what I was talking about? How, do I, how have I literally forgotten what I was talking about? And I was like, oh, I've got good good memory and everything. Crossword, Sudoku. Someone remembered something really random I said. Well, it wasn't that random. I can't remember when I talked about it, <laughs> to be honest. To what, what was I? I don't, I don't recall. Is, is this completely gone from my memory, whatever I was talking about? Oh, well. Um... There was something I wanted to talk about. I, I kind of want to check what I was talking about in video wise. Just, just, <laughs> just have a little bit of a listen to it. See exactly what was going on. But alas, it's disappeared now, and you know, it's never to be returned. Well, once something's gone, it's gone. <laughs> it's it's actually genuinely just gone from my mind. Hold on. Uh, this is where you, you bust out recording. You see what you were talking about because maybe it was cool, maybe it wasn't. I remember what I was talking about now. <laughs> it was, uh, in fact, not at all important that I had to pause and go look it up. Uh, I was talking, I was gonna, I was talking about my gacha games. That's so boring. No wonder I forgot about it immediately. I was talking about Starlight Stage. I was like, maybe people remember, which would honestly be insane. But my favourite Cinderella Girls character is Mayu. I did actually manage to pull her new SSR um, on the second free pull that we got during this anniversary event. So that was incredible, and I was like, what? And I was very happy about that. So it means I, I can continuously save up 
or my currency for someone else, I guess. Probably Shiki, maybe. Because Asuka Fire's already come out, which I also got on a free pool. It's miraculous thing. And Yui finds. Oh, sorry, wait. Asuka, wait, hold on. I've been coming. It's not going to make any sense to you. That was my U6. Was that Asuka 6? What's Asuka 5? Wait, Asuka 1? Is that one? Asuka 2? That one, Asuka 3? What's Asuka 3? That one, Asuka 4? That one, Asuka. That was Asuka 5, wasn't it? Or am I losing my mind? What? Well, maybe one of these days I'll actually end up talking about Cinderella girls, but, but that's not today. Instead, I'm, I'm just going to check a database because, as I say, I just use Animal Crossing to do stuff I would normally do. But I, I just do it simultaneously while playing Animal Crossing. Excuse me. That's not what I wanted. That, that go, I must say. As, as great as it is that it doesn't track like um, my history and that sort of thing, when I search things on it, it is considerably worse than Google at finding the result I want. <laughs> Which I guess is kind of a point because Google tracks your results and then learns from it. So that's one, two, that's three, that's four. If that was only Asker five, Asker six could come out at any moment. Okay, maybe that's what I'm saving up for. Uh, what, what should we sell? We need to give Phoebe a little Prezi. I don't remember if we got salmons or not, so. Uh, we can just sell these, like, who really cares? We should probably clear out a storage of anything. Um, don't sell that. Because if, if I recall, we have too much storage space. Taken up by point that's rubbish. I don't know, what should I talk about? I got, see, the problem about talking about Big Brain Academy is I already talked about it. <laughs> it's a bit weird to talk about it twice in a row. Um, I like, I don't know, Battle Royales? Nah. You, you, see, this is what you got to do. You gotta. Sometimes it takes a, a bit of a while to find that sort of inspiration, that sort of um, muse of conversational topics that you really gotta search deep inside your mind for. And sometimes it doesn't come out. Sometimes the only thing in my, on my brain now is like brain draining and big brain academy. But I've already talked to, like not ad nauseum about them, I suppose. But enough of that. But people probably don't care anymore. I do want like some brain training game based battle royale. I wonder if there is one. I feel like, because, you know, Twitch reactions aren't really my sort of thing. My reaction speed is not great. You know? And I suppose it's not always been particularly well demonstrated. There's not many times it comes up in everyday life. It really only comes up in video games I can think of. Um, and the sports as well, but I don't play much sports. It might be like, didn't you do fencing for a while? Yeah, actually. Um, I don't really have an explanation for you for, about that. That just, like, fencing just ended up working out for me, I suppose. <laughs> I, I didn't do it competitively, mind you. I, I just did it recreationally. Wish I started younger on it. It was very fun. Have I ever talked about fencing before? Let's see. How much does Dear Darling remember about fencing? Okay, there's three. What are they called? They're not called divisions. I always forget what this word's called. They're like, it's like categories, but it's not categories. Hold on. This is, this is fencing. I'm not, I'm not doing it to check the, the, um, the rules of fencing. I think I remember most of them. They're, they're three... Not divisions, are free disciplines, that's a word. Three disciplines, there's epi. Well, I suppose the normal order is a foil, saber, epi. Which one did I do? We, uh, I, I learned foil and we I did a tiny bit of um, epi, I think, at one point, but I don't really remember it. Um, they're, all f they're all very different in certain ways, like but the swords are different. I don't remember how the swords are different. I think the saber one is shorter and the epi one's longer. The, the arm guards are different, like the epi one's got like a full circular arm guard. Or, the sabers just got like like a, a crescent moon one, and a foil has just like a tiny circle or something in front of it. Um, or maybe but the foil is the lightest one. Is that that's, that rings a bell? I remember the foil one. The foil div, uh, discipline is considered the most technical discipline. Oh no, this concept of right away, which I guess I should explain. It's basically kind of like I don't know a priority, and right right away is given to one of the two competitors at any one point, and right away is normally given to the one who's basically attacking more or <laughs> in, in the better attacking position i suppose so attacking first tends to put you in right away if you tend to um i don't know if there's something like you can hold your arm out like extended or something like that keeps right away i can't remember but you can also like change right away by um making like you know if your opponent goes for like a stab at you you make and you dodge it and then you go in for a riposte that's right away being changed by way if i get this wrong don't like light me up or anything this is just all a bit of fun to see how much i remember from like, my um 
a few months of fencing I did back in uni. Um, you, you can make them fall short. And that changes right away to you. Because now you're in the better attacking position because you managed to dodge attack. You can parry them and repost. But it also does the same thing, you know. It's basically like, if you're attacking, you have right, you have the right away, quote, quote. But if you manage to turn the tables and your opponent the right away switches to you. Anyway, foil plays with right away rules. And foil, what is the valid area to hit people in, in foil? That's a good question. I think... Let me think. Epe is his entire body. Saber is just the top half. So foil must be like... the. A torso area like imagine you're wearing a swimsuit or something like maybe not swim imagine wearing a leotard i suppose it's that entire area i think <laughs> this is this way you check offense in wikipedia article because i still got it open yeah yeah okay it's that if i got it right yeah epe is everything and saber's just a top half surprisingly remember that apparently epe is also second and saber's though for some reason i thought it was the other way around um and, and foil the only way you can get a score is if you have right away and you stab your opponent. Right? Something that's very technical because of that right away thing. <laughs> but Epe is a very a very slow one because um Oh yeah, a thing I should have mentioned about right away is if you're if you have right away and you score a point, even if your opponent hits you, um you don't lose a point. Um they don't get a point in foil. So really it's all about battling for right away and getting quick decisive strikes when the opportunity arises but epe is like i can't remember if epe doesn't have right away or is it like no yeah epe doesn't have right away and you can get hit anywhere again only by stabbing um because it doesn't have right away if you get hit and your opponent also gets a hit then that means you both get a point so that's why it's much more slower much more you know baiting out the right opportunity because to get an advantage in Epe, you have to get a hit off without being hit back, without being retaliated. Whether with foil is, if you have right away and you get your hit off, you'll be completely fine. So that's points. Epe is much more slower. And then Saber is just absolutely wild. It's just lightning quick. Because in Saber, um, they do have right away rules, I believe. But also, um, you can get hits in not just by stabbing people, but by also like swiping at them. Just any contact, I think, with a sword's blade on the valid zone for the opponent counts as a hit, which is why Saber is so aggressive, because it's much better to sort of attack first, ask questions later, so you can establish getting right of the way. Right of way and get the hit in. And Saber is just insanely quick, <laughs> I must say. I suppose it's my sort of bias to someone who didn't fight for ages and didn't really try as much as Saber. And when I watch people just do Saber, they just sort of like charge at each other. <laughs> it's like, charge! Oh, one of them got the hit somehow. <laughs> it's like, what's going on? But Epe, of course, has a... You, you can definitely tell my, my foil bias, I suppose. I want to watch people playing Epe. It's just, you know, two people dancing back and forth for a while. I've always wanted to try, you know, both of them. And maybe, you know, I'd, I'd like fall in love and be like, oh, you know, it turns out Saber's my sort of my deal, which I'd imagine it could be. Not because it's fast-paced necessarily, but because perhaps that sort of, like, um, improvisational side of it feels much better for me rather than the methodical side, which is a bit weird. I'm glad I ran into you, feels like I've been looking for you forever, but any time off my couch feels like forever, so it might have only been a few minutes. Anyway, I found that thing you're looking for. A Chimayo vest. What other fencing rules are there? I don't know, but you, you play on the piece? And then, what, what did they say at the beginning? I, I can't remember. On guard. <laughs> something, something. It has been so long, I don't remember. I don't know, but it was also like positions you can hold the fencing in. It was like one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or something. I forget what those even meant. And there's like two types of like different parries you can do. Like one of them is like a beat. You can just like hit where you just hit your opponent's um, sword or foil, I suppose. Then going for the attack, and one of them is like a sort of like curve one where you sort of like, push the sword away to make it go past you. There's this another one I remember, which was basically you just sort of like lunge at your opponent and sort of like a last ditch, not last ditch effort, but like a Hail Mary, just like huge burst of speed to get hit your opponent. I remember because we, we had a, obviously the person who, who taught us fencing was someone who was pretty good at fencing. Like I, I, I don't remember what accolades they have, but they part partook in fencing tournaments and that sort of thing. And then we had times where it was like, all right, oh, we're going to do like, most of you just going to do some group training sessions. So, you know, you know, one and off with other people 
in, in my class. But then, like, sometimes he would take um, each of us, like, one on one sides and just work on our technique and see, like, um, what things we can learn and do some sort of, um, I, I don't know, I guess, like, a, a more personal one on one session training thing. I remember, like, one of the times he did it, the first time he did it, I was, like, the first one he took off a side and he basically just overwhelmed me, overwhelmed me with a lot of information. I like to think I was decently good in that beginner group, but I don't really recall, to be honest, maybe I wasn't. But, um, I remember he was like, okay, if I do this, do this, 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 and he kept trying to add it on, and then uh, at some point I was just like, okay, I'm not, I apologise, but I, can't, I cannot remember all of these things. <laughs> and he was like, alright, you know, fair enough, that's probably a bit too much, I just kind of want to see how much you could do. And I was like, oh, okay, it's sort of like a limit testing. How well did I do? I don't know. But it was a lot of information. Anyway, the other one I remember is, there was uh, one point where it was near the end of the time, whatever, and he was just like, okay, if, it, if this sort of thing, we're going to have like a one-on-one -on -one duels between you and me, you know, and the rest of you just like continue practicing and you lot will just carry on like, um, yeah, we'll just like, I know, do 1v1s between each other, then I'm just gonna take you aside and have a one on one on one duel and see what happens. And obviously, I think we all lost because he was, we're all beginners and he's obviously kind of good, but I did get one hit in and I remember it is because I used that technique, te te technique of, um, or at least one hit. I've, maybe I got more in, but I don't, I don't honestly remember. Um, we should catch some bugs. Do we have enough space? Mm -mm. Is that enough space? One, two, not really. We need, we need to sell some things. Actually, let's clear out our storage because we need to do that. Um, it's that sort of like diving thing where basically he was just like, okay, on guard and then, hello. Let go and I just immediately went, whew, I just like huge burst of energy just like ran at him. Sword fully extended to try and get hit in. And he was like, you know what? That's pretty good. Especially because there's like a skill disparity as I remember him explaining is, is a good, you, you need to go for much more riskier things to have a chance of getting a hit in. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of basically what I was thinking. I was like, I'm not going to beat you on a technical ability, but if, you know. I say, as that old saying goes, if you experience the expert swordsman fears not, the, no, the best swordsman in the world does not fear the second best swordsman in the world, nor the third, nor the fourth. He fears, he fears the person who picks up the sword for the first time because he does what he ought not to do. And sometimes that can be enough to fail the expert in one blow or something. Basically, being that um, beginner's luck kind of is not so much just luck but per se, but experts tend to train against other experts and there's reasons that they've developed their certain techniques and why their techniques are superior, but in a case-by-case -case basis, basis where you only need to get one, one random hit off, sometimes um, beginners can win out because they just randomly do something which they're not expected, the expert then, well, expect him to do and with that he can you know as i say fell the expert in one fell sweep <laughs> i don't think i explained that very well it, it, it's as i was talking about in celeste by the way if it was last, i recorded some celeste earlier today first <laughs> it, it's gonna be a very amusing episode because it's gonna be the shortest episode of celeste it's 15 minutes long one of them um and it's not the finale believe it or not it's not the final episode if you're wondering, is uh, I'm not sure if I should spoil it. What, what episode are we on on Celeste right now? What, what, what's just been uploaded? I don't know. Also, we don't have any duplicate items, it seems. A pagoda, but I don't really want to sell another pagoda. Those are limited ones. What's the last episode that just got uploaded? I will not stand for it. Oh, we still haven't even finished Farewell yet. Okay. On the uploader series, well, surprise, surprise. Or perhaps unsurprised. Oh, you know what? I saw a really good tip that someone said was you should use the Mario pipes if you're trying to clear out your storage and just put one put one in your home put one right outside nooks so you can teleport back and forth really quickly that is honestly a really good idea i can't remember where i saw it but i saw it somewhere um we should probably clear out clothes because we have so many clothes and we'll sort of work down with from the bottom upwards um yeah it's a really short last episode we've done farewell and you know you might be able to guess it's because um I've been doing the seasides and I'm trying to do like each seaside one on each level and I just absolutely demolished the seaside and did it in 15 minutes somehow. <laughs> I have no idea how, um, but yeah. As I said before, I don't think the audiences have much overlap between Animal Crossing Celeste. If, if there are, fantastic. If there's not, ah well. <laughs> I don't know why we have so many uh, certain types of shoes. Why I, why I keep so many of these? Like why I don't need two winkle pickers? I don't even know what winkle pickers even are, to be honest. Shiny bow platform shoes? Do I just keep cute ones? But I don't even change my style anymore, so why do I keep the cute ones? 
<laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I blame Nintendo for not giving us enough storage space. You know, if they could just give us another thousand and I'll be like, yeah, let's go. But instead of, look at me now, I had to get rid of all these duplicate shoes that we got piling up the place. Because alas, I just don't have room for them. There's no room at the end and no room in my storage. But anyway, fencing's pretty cool. I don't really have many other sort of fencing stories. Unfortunately, at least none that really translate well into a story. Like there's one I was dueling with other girl, and you know, there's one moment where we were just sort of just like standing next to each other because we're playing. We're, we're both trying to bait each other out to go into for attack or that sort of thing, or being both being ready to parry. And then we just sort of ended up getting closer and closer until I just realised, wait a minute, I'm like right next to her. And then I just like leant forward a bit and stabbed, <laughs> and I got the point. And we were just like, what are we doing? <laughs> How did this happen? Very funny, though. I mean, the, the pipe suggestion was actually more of a suggestion for people who had the, the nook's cranny far, far away from their house. Ours is, like, right next to it, so I guess it's not really that big of a deal, but um, why not, I suppose? If we can save a few seconds, every second counts. Because if you've only got four minutes to save a world as an old Madonna plus Justin Timberlake question mark song goes... You know, every, every second counts. Hold on. You only got four minutes to save the world. Madonna featured Justin Timberlake. How do I know? What's the meaning behind the song? I honestly have no clue. Let's see, meaning, four minutes, promotional tour, rave segment, inspiration. I don't think it's important to take it too literally. I think the song, more than anything, is about having a sense of urgency. About how we are, you know, living on borrowed time essentially, and people are becoming much more aware of the environment and we're destroying the planet. Well, this is getting a bit too real, so I'm going to close that. <laughs> but you know, fair enough. Don't read into it too much. What other fencing stories do I have? Mm, there's not really much, it was just like a, a fun time. Is that all I can really say? I've got to keep those garter socks. If I'd, if I'd wear it in real life, I've got to keep them. Probably wouldn't wear that. <laughs> flowery sort of things. And some of these colours are a bit much for me. Denim leggings. Country socks. <laughs> so for some reason the Bo Burnham song, just like country. What's that called? Country? Country? Country girl song? Something like that. You take your country girl clothes off. Sorry, a bit <laughs> a bit lewd. Can't remember how it goes though. Bo Burnham, cool guy. Pretty, pretty talented, must say. Aspirationally so. Turns out we have a lot of duplicate eyewear. Which we certainly don't need. Like, we don't need all these heart shades, but why not keep them? Just for fun. Justice mask. Can't wait for, um, we were here forever to come out, but apparently it's taking forever itself to come out. <laughs> okay, we'll sell this stuff and then we'll clear out our... We'll deposit some money in the ABD. And then we'll round up the episode. I really wish I had more to say about fencing. It's, it's just cool, you know? It's probably the most, maybe not the most fun sport, but it's up there with like fencing and uh, badminton and volleyball. I think are some of the more fun sports to watch. You might be like, did you watch them during the Olympics? No, but I also watch like nothing on the Olympics and also because it's kind of difficult to watch things online on the Olympics. You know, I, I just don't know where to watch them. <laughs> If it, if it was live streamed, if it was like on Twitch, perhaps I would. That was the thing, wasn't it? Like some Twitch streamers were like paid to live stream and co-commentate uh, some of the Olympic sports. Maybe I should start Twitch streaming so next time the Olympics roll around I can start commentating on fencing. <laughs> and get paid to do that as well. That'd be fun. Hello, Wardy. What are you thinking about? Out of table? Sure. Why not? Always getting free items everywhere. I wonder how close our catalogue is to being full. Filled, filled. Probably not that close because there's probably a lot of items in um, Nook's Cranny which we never really buy. But yeah, what am I going to do after this? I'm probably going to do some programming and probably some drawing. Actually, you know what the thing I did want to check was I, I wanted to see when the final episode of Bugsax is coming out because I need to start thinking about 13th. Okay, so it's going to be in one week's time. I need to start thinking about that next series. Which I've said probably it's going to be Life is Strange True Colours but it's also kind of expensive. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm, I was rec recently gifted Later Alligator by some of my friends for my birthday. 
So I'm, it might be that. It's going to be one of those two. And that's also another thing I was considering about because I feel a bit bad sort of playing Life is um, a story-based game. Like when it's so soon after come out. I guess I'll talk about more talk about this more tomorrow because that's actually a good dialogue for um, an Animal Crossing video. But basically I don't want to play a story game so soon after it comes out because it doesn't encourage other people to go buy it. In fact, it discourages people to buy it. And that happened amusingly with the first Life is Strange game where like the amount of press and like um, popularity it got, the sales don't really reflect that. And that's probably because a lot of people just ended up watching it rather than playing it and buying it themselves. So I don't know. But anyway, that's just something for me to ruminate on. So if you have been watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Likes, comments, subscription, shares are greatly appreciated. Join me Dear Darling in Discord. Follow me on Twitter down below. Hope we can see each other again. But for now, it's our farewell. So until next time, bye-bye for now.